What is Jon Snow's real name, his Targaryen name? Let's take a look. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. On this channel we dig into George R. R. Martin's world in depth. A Song of Ice and Fire, Duncan Egg, House of the Dragon and more. That's as well as Lord of the Rings and The Witcher. If you're new, welcome. What is Jon Snow's real name? And to get this out of the way to start with, yes, we're working on the assumption here that he is Rhaegar and Lyanna's son, a theory overwhelmingly accepted in the fandom. And yes, on the TV show they told us that his real or Targaryen name was Aegon. But we won't take that as our starting point. We'll instead dig into the clues that we have in the books. And let's start with the parents, because they are the people who presumably named him. Rhaegar first. What might he have wanted to call his child, bearing in mind that although this would have been his first child with Lyanna, it would have been his third child overall? Well, rather wonderfully, Daenerys actually has a vision of him in the books in the House of the Undying when he is talking about his children. He is with his first wife, Elia, who asks him what they should name their newborn, their second child. Aegon, he said, what better name for a king? Will you make a song for him? the woman asked. He has a song, the man replied. He is the prince that was promised, and his is the song of ice and fire. There must be one more, he said, though whether he was speaking to her or the woman in the bed, Danny could not say. The dragon has three heads. So it seems clear that Rhaegar, the man obsessed with prophecy, is saying here that he must have one more child because he wants there to be three Targaryen siblings, and given the names he has given his first two, that he wants them to mirror Aegon, Visenya and Rhaenys. As he already has a daughter called Rhaenys and a son called Aegon, that means he needs a daughter called Visenya. But Elia couldn't have any more children, so it would appear that at least part of the driving force behind him seeking out Lyanna was connected with that desire. And he thought that the child he had with Lyanna would be a daughter he would call Visenya. And all proceeded according to his plan until he died at the Battle of the Trident, and then most of his family were killed and the Targaryen reign ended. Poor Lyanna was left alone in the now rather horribly named Tower of Joy, heavily pregnant but already fearing for the safety of her child and herself. She had three Kingsguard there to protect her, but that wasn't enough to stop Robert Baratheon's fury, so she, or someone else close to her, let Ned know where she was so he could come and help. And then she gave birth to a son, so even Rhaegar's plan to call their child Visenya was gone. What was she to call her newborn? And in case you were wondering if she had the right in that world, this is how George R. R. Martin replied to a question in 2002 about how John, Danny, and Tyrion were named. Mothers can name a child before birth, or during, or after, even while they are dying. So yes, Lyanna definitely had the authority here to name her child. But what? Well, the first possibility is that she didn't. She died before she named him, and so Ned named him John after his foster father, John Arryn. There's no mystery here, everyone can move on. And in that quote I just used, George R. R. Martin does go on to say this. Danny was most like named by her mother, Tyrion by his father, John by Ned. So the name John was given to John by Ned. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about whether Lyanna chose a name before Ned got there. And on a very basic human level, I think we have to say that it's very likely that she did. This was her child, her only child. Of course she was going to give it a name. As George R. R. Martin said, mothers can name a child before birth or during or after, even while they are dying. John is, let's face it, the kind of name we would expect Ned to name a child as a cover story. He loved John Arryn, hence John, and he loved Robert Baratheon, hence Rob Stark, and he loved his brother Brandon, hence Bran Stark, and his father Rickard, hence Rickon Stark. I don't want to call him basic, but he loved his family. No one would suspect anything by him naming the baby John. I'm sure Lyanna also loved her family, but things were more complicated for her. So perhaps she didn't name her son as per her family traditions, but to honour her son's dead father. Hold that thought, because I think there may be a bit of foreshadowing about this in one of the early Jon Snow chapters. 
Sam Tarley has just arrived at the wall and is introducing himself. If you want, you can call me Sam. My mother calls me Sam. You can call him Lord Snow, Pip said as he came up to join them. You don't want to know what his mother calls him. Now, that's an odd joke, particularly as John's mother's absence and the fact he doesn't even know who she is is well known and quite a touchy subject for John, but it sets up the idea that his mother might call him something different to the rest of the world. Furthermore, Ned names John after his foster father. Is that a hint at Ned being John's foster father? Anyway, I digress. There is enough here for us to see that George R. R. Martin saying that Ned named John John does not preclude the idea that Liana named him something before then. So if Liana did give him a name, and it was a Targaryen name to honour his father, and perhaps even to bolster his claim to the throne if it ever came to that, what might she call him? Perhaps his father's own name, Rhaegar? Maybe, I suppose, but it's noticeable that despite the Targaryens' proclivity to call their children by similar names, they tended to avoid naming a son after his father. And would it have been too raw for Lyanna to name her child after her lover, or a husband, though let's not get into that in this video, so soon after he died? So maybe Viserys. Rhaegar had wanted to name his child Visenya, and Viserys seems to be the male form of that, so maybe she would want to respect his wishes that way. Yes, but if we remember the context, Lyanna thinks that there are only two other Targaryens alive at the time, one of whom is called Viserys. Yes, the Viserys we know. And even at that young age, we know from Zabariston that he was not altogether sane, let's put it that way. Lyanna probably wouldn't have wanted to name her child after him. Fans have also suggested Jaehaerys. Jaehaerys I is the archetypally good Targaryen king, and Jaehaerys II was Rhaegar's grandfather, so that makes some sense. And some have also suggested Aemon, both because of Jon's later connections with Maester Aemon and because of some thematic echoes with Aemon the Dragon Knight. But personally, I think the strongest case can be made for Aegon. Starting again from Lyanna's perspective, she might not have wished to go with Viserys or Rhaegar for the reasons we've stated, but how about honouring Rhaegar's son Aegon, who also died? That makes sense, and I'm sure Lyanna will have known that Rhaegar felt it important that his son and heir be called Aegon. Calling John that would therefore honour both Rhaegar's dead son and Rhaegar's wishes. And not just that, but it would also associate John with the prince that was promised prophecy that Rhaegar seems to have been desperately trying to fulfil. As we know, Aegon I was the person who first had the Song of Ice and Fire. Danis the Dreamer, the Targaryen who foresaw the doom of Valyria and brought her family to Dragonstone, named her eldest son Aegon, and Rhaegar, of course, the man who thought his son would fulfil the prophecy of the prince that was promised, named him Aegon. Simply put, Aegon is the name most closely associated with that prophecy. Perhaps it isn't written anywhere that the prince that was promised must be called Aegon, but if the Targaryens had to choose one name, it would be that. And there is a very well-known section in Book 1 that if you read it from the perspective that John might secretly be called Aegon, suddenly takes on whole new meanings. Maester Aemon is talking directly to John here. It takes a man to rule, an Aegon, not an egg. Kill the boy and let the man be born. The old man felt John's face. You are half the age that Egg was, and your own burden is a crueler one, I fear. You will have little joy of your command, but I think you have the strength in you to do the things that must be done. Kill the boy, Jon Snow. Winter is almost upon us. Kill the boy, and let the man be born. Let's just stop and play that back. Aemon, the dragon dreamer, remember, is telling John that in order to rule, have his command and do the things that must be done because winter is coming, he must kill the boy Jon Snow and let the man Aegon be born. To me, that feels as on the nose a bit of foreshadowing as when Robert Baratheon joked that the North was keeping kings hidden under the snow. Snow, Ned. Which brings us back to the reveal on the TV show that John's real name was Aegon. Not that they did huge amounts with that information. John basically just carried on being John. As usual, we can't really take the show as a strong indication that it will be the same in the books, but perhaps it is a hint. So where does all that leave us? 
We know that Ned gave John his name John as a cover, but that on a very basic human level, it seems likely that Liana had already named him something else. Perhaps telling John his true name was one of the things she made Ned promise her before she died. Maybe that was why Ned thinks of broken promises, rather than promises kept, which she would think if he'd just promised to keep John safe. And if John does have a Targaryen name, it will have been one chosen by Lyanna. And we don't know for certain, but the most likely candidate is Aegon, foreshadowed by Maester Aemon telling John that he must kill the boy Jon Snow, because it takes an Aegon to rule. But for all this talk of John's true name, we do have to ask, if he's ever told about it, will he use it? I think it's far from certain that he will, because yes, John finding out about his true heritage will be a pivotal moment in the story, but it won't change the fact that John's real father, in the sense of who actually brought him up, is Ned. As he says, Lord Eddard Stark is my father. I will not forget him, no matter how many swords they give me. John may turn out to be secretly Aegon Targaryen, or some other Targaryen name, but it won't change who he really is. But what do you think? Do you think John's real name is Aegon or something else? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos diving deep into A Song of Ice and Fire, please click on the playlist on the left of your screen. Or if you want to support this channel, thank you. The best way to do that is via Patreon, the link on the right of your screen. Thanks for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.